I'm here today with Fernando Segovia, uh, Oberlin graduate professor of New Testament and early Christianity at Vanderbilt University. Uh, Fernando, if I may. Uh, Indeed. It's, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for it's joining us. It's a pleasure, us. a privilege, and an honor for me to be here. So we're in New Haven today at, at uh, the Yale Center for Faith and Culture for a conversation about the future of theology, uh, a small a small topic, <laughs> that uh, uh, but a, 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 I kid that it's a small topic, a, a, a big question uh, mm -hmm. facing uh, those of us who are involved in the theological guild, but also the church and uh, and, and, and and beyond. Um, so uh, we talk a, a bit, uh, Miroslav and I do, in the paper that we circulated uh, for this conversation about um, some of what is troubling in, in, in theology today. But maybe we can start with uh, uh, what's right with theology uh, these days? What, are, uh, what gives you hope? What makes you excited to see uh, in the work of your, your peers or in the students that you teach? What, uh, what's, what's going really well in theology? What are the bright spots? Mm -hmm. Uh, by theology, I take it that we mean um, uh, the the complex of the of of, of the fields of studies yeah. a, as a whole, not just including theological studies, studies but yep. biblical, historical, Ethics, practical, yeah. ethical, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and in the Catholic tradition, canon law, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> liturgy mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, so, what is good about it? Well, it seems to me, this is how I would approach it, that um, the discourse of religion mm -hmm. is one of the uh, major, most important, long-standing discourses of the humanities. Mm -hmm. Religion, economics, history, but religion is I think central is a central discourse to um, to all civilizations and to uh, society and culture. And within that that discourse, Christian studies is becomes a subset of it in a certain sense, and has been very important to the construction of uh, certainly the Western world, but by extension through the missions and the, the spread of Christianity to, uh, at a global level uh, to the world itself. Mm -hmm. So that Christian studies also becomes um, a most important part of the discourse of religion mm -hmm. and should not be forgotten and, and certainly should not be bypassed but should be emphasized mm -hmm. as such. What I like about it today, what I would highlight today, is the fact that this discourse, the discourse of Christian studies, is, is now being pursued, uh, conceptualized as well as formulated at a global level. Mm -hmm. That is, that uh, these fields of studies that compose the field of study of Christian studies now has uh, uh, participants, spokespeople, not only in the North Atlantic, as was the case mm -hmm. up to really even the time when I began my studies, but now uh, everywhere, mm -hmm. from Africa to Asia to Latin America, and that this must be taken into uh, uh, serious consideration. It's, it's essential mm -hmm. that it be done at a global level and that it is being done at a global level and and in that I I rejoice I think that's one of the great benefits mm -hmm. one of the great advantages that um, Christian studies which is the word I guess I'm using mm -hmm. for theology mm -hmm. um, has um, in the present mm -hmm. that there are many voices that there are many faces and that they all, in a sense, lay claim to, stand within, and talk about uh, the Christian tradition as a set of Christian traditions. Mm -hmm. 
I think that particular movement, mm -hmm. uh, that particular process mm -hmm. has been um, a godsend, I would think. Mm -hmm. I certainly have benefited a great deal from that expansion. Mm -hmm. So I definitely, I would say that's one of the good things about the, the conduct and the practice or the thought and the practice of Christian studies today. Mm. That's what's, uh, and there's, there's, I'm sure, more that we could talk about, right, that's encouraging, that's fruitful, that's dynamic, it's happening right now. What are some of the challenges as you, as you see it to, uh, to theology in the present moment or as we project into the future? Are there, uh -huh. are there, are there threats that, that, it, that it faces or are there particular challenges of this moment? An immediate problem, I think, that follows from, the, from that observation is that that sense of Christian studies as global is still not taken very seriously mm -hmm. in the institutions of learning of, uh, of the first world, mm -hmm. of the North Atlantic world. There was a time perhaps when there was more um, of an emphasis on it, the time following the 60s, 70s, 80s. Mm. But I think in more recent times, that sense of, uh, of uh, communion with, uh, participation in, uh, engagement with the Global South in, in Christian studies is not as, has not been as foregrounded as, mm. as it should be. Mm unfortunately. So despite the fact that this is going on and has been going on now for several decades, institutions, many institutions still, even though they may call themselves globalized and conscious mm. of this phenomenon, do not actually undertake uh, the education of Christian studies at the global level at which it should be undertaken. Mm. I, I think that would be one of the serious challenges, serious faults, mm. and uh, serious challenges to uh, theology, Christian studies. Mm -hmm. The second, a second challenge, I think, has been uh, the rise of a concept of the corporate university, mm. in which the um, uh, the emphasis has been on um, productivity, raising funds, mm. expanding the middle range of uh, members of the university between the central administration and the faculty at the expense of faculty. And alongside that, a certain um, exclusion of the discourse of religion in general mm. and the discourse of Christian studies in particular as, uh, as a viable discourse or as a welcome discourse uh, within the university. Mm. In ignorance of the fact, to repeat my first point, that the discourse of religion and hence the discourse of Christian studies is one of the central discourses. Mm -hmm. of not just Western civilization, but all civilizations. And it should be part and parcel, in my opinion, in the education of, um, of, of university students mm -hmm. throughout. In part, I think, because of, a, because of the relationship to the first point on, on the corporate university, b namely, religion does not bring money in the same way that the law does or that business administration does uh, or nursing does or the medical profession does. It simply doesn't bring in the money in the same way. And as a result, it is both materially and discursively marginalized mm -hmm. within uh, a university context. I think that's very much uh, related to it. If, it. if it were to bring money, I think it would be a different story. Mm. But it, it does not bring uh, money and its graduates are not people who will later donate millions of dollars mm. to their place of employment, uh, to their place of education. So I think that's, that's another thing that we are, uh, that we're facing 
And it's, to me, it's, it's, it's incredible that one of the most important discourses mm -hmm. of all civilizations is, um, is not being hearkened to, is mm -hmm. not being paid attention to. In a sense, precisely at the time when religion is becoming, once again, mm -hmm. such a fundamental factor yeah. in, um, in the global sphere. Mm. So then what, what is it, as you, as you see it, what is the role then of Christian studies, say, in the education mm -hmm. of, of an undergraduate in today's world? Or uh, what is, what is the theological education or Christian studies education for? What is that supposed to be doing for the student? How is, mm -hmm. uh, what are we aiming at when, in terms of the intervention we're trying to make in the formation of a student's uh, intellect or imagination? Yes. Um, I, I should think that um, a main, one of the main goals, if not perhaps the main goal, of, um, of an education in Christian studies is to let people, to let the student know that they are part uh, of a very um, long-standing, wide-ranging uh, tradition, which is the Christian tradition made up of all sorts of variations in conflict and, very in, and, and with enormous complexity, but nonetheless, that if you're going to call yourself Christian, you belong within, uh, at no, no matter at what religious theolo theological level you do mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. you do belong to a tradition. Mm -hmm. And that that tradition uh, has meaning, has multidimensional meaning, is constantly shifting, constantly ongoing, and does provide, I think, um, as complex and conflicted as it may be, mm -hmm. a view on uh, what life is all about mm -hmm. and what the praxis uh, of a Christian, somebody who calls himself or herself a Christian, should be mm -hmm. uh, in the light of that tradition uh, in the world today. Mm -hmm. And when that element is missing, and of course one can argue the same thing for the Hindu, mm -hmm. uh, for Hinduism or Buddhism, but I'm arguing right. from the tradition that I most know. Uh, when that happens, there's this tremendous ignorance of what one is a part of mm -hmm. and what that, how that part drives one and has driven one's ancestors, predecessors, societies, and, and cultures, with all of its faults, but also with all of, the, of of its advantages. So again, I think it's a sense of the wholeness of education and how this particular discourse sh gives and should give orientation within society and culture. Hmm. So do you talk about that for the, for the Christian student um, or for someone who come, has some sort of Christian heritage? Um, what about for the, for, the, for the outsider to the tradition? Um, what is the place of Christian studies in our, as we see more and more, th our situation becoming more and more pluralistic world, mm -hmm. where more and more of our students aren't from this tradition, don't have, uh, don't come from a, a heritage that has a connection to it. Mm -hmm. um, what, is, what is the role of, of Christian studies uh, for them? And maybe that's a bit of a microcosm of what we could be thinking about more broadly, out beyond academia and in, in yes. society as a whole. Yes. I, I, in, in a way, the role is the same. Mm. This is what the tradition um, stands for, whether you're an insider or, 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 or an outsider. Mm. And if you're an outsider, then it, it, uh, it's incumbent upon you to realize, to come to know and acknowledge uh, the tradition within which you stand. Mm because we all stand in traditions whether we want to or not. Mm -hmm. And if it's a position of um, no uh, association with any tradition, well that I would call a religious theological position mm -hmm. in its own right. Mm -hmm. So what are your gods? Mm -hmm. What is your vision of life? What is your praxis? Mm -hmm. uh, where does it come from? Here we are, we have ours mm -hmm. in, in, in very complex and conflicted fashion, but so do you. And what gods do you worship? Mm -hmm. Is it mammon that you worship? Is it the economy? Is it whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you must bring it to, to expression. Mm 
mm -hmm. uh, and become aware of it. So the Christian tradition can become uh, an object to look at or a system to look, or a tradition to look at in order to kind of grow one's own self-awareness of one's exactly. own tradition, tradition. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Where yeah. everyone, I suppose at that point, yeah, yeah, as you say, whatever your relationship is to the Christian tradition, you can see this tradition, see what, a, learn what a tradition is, how it forms one's mind, a kind of, yeah, okay. Yes, and also how you stand in uh, mm -hmm. uh, whatever it is that you do stand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So your, uh, your work, um, like the work of many um, liberationist scholars, uh, pays great attention to the impact of sort of expansive global systems. And you gave a lecture uh, here last night, and uh, it was a fantastic lecture in which you talk about the, um, the, well, the scale of these systems, that be they political or economic or uh, climatological or even geological, that we're making the, that sort of impact now as a human species. Um, when you think about uh, those kinds of big systems, uh, that it just seems so so right. Okay, this is this is the real material reality, and if Christian theology has no impact on that, then then what are we doing? Um, Miroslav and I proposed in our in our paper uh, around uh, for our conversation this weekend. Um, that, that perhaps the future of theology might lie in an orientation around articulating kind of visions of the good life. Um, at first blush, I actually, I don't think necessarily, but at first, the good life might sound individual, particular, mm -hmm. small, personal. Mm -hmm. It's at least that. Um, are, are those, uh, is a focus on the good life uh, necessarily kind of missing the big kind of questions of systems? Or how would we think about systems within a Christian studies that's oriented around articulating visions of the good life? Mm -hmm. You mentioned um, liberation theology mm -hmm. to begin with, and uh, I'm very indebted to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it, it would be good to begin by recalling um, the three mediations that liberation theology brought to the, th to the task of theology. On the one hand, well, first of all, not necessarily in that sequence, mm. first of all, uh, the need for critical analysis of society and culture as one's context. Secondly, as a theological discipline, the need for critical analysis of the biblical and historical tradition uh, of uh, Christianity itself. And finally, a critical analysis of uh, practice and life, life and practice. All of these are uh, related, closely re related uh, to one another, very closely related. They may be done sequentially, usually uh, they're done uh, at the same time. This was proposed uh, in the 70s, and what was proposed then would need to be um, thoroughly reconceptualized and reformulated today at all three levels. In the critical analysis of society and culture, in terms of Bible and tradition, and also in terms of praxis, because the world has changed, and you cannot do the same analysis in, you know, that was done in 1970 in, um, in, in the 2010s. And the liberationist method is in part constructed in order to force you yes. to reevaluate constantly. Yes, and, and the approaches that you use right. have also undergone 40 years right. of uh, mm -hmm. whether it's the social sciences mm -hmm. or the historical disciplines mm -hmm. or the practical disciplines, they have all undergone 40 years mm -hmm. of further discursive mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. So the, quest the, the sense of uh, of uh, where we are and where we stand as, as we do uh, Christian studies and for what purpose always has to have in my mind a profound analysis of the context both discursive and material in which we stand. Mm -hmm. And the context in, in uh, which we stand today is a uh, one uh, which many people refer to as uh, decisive in, 
even in, in terms of uh, human history as such, in the abstract, in the possibility of the finitude mm -hmm. of the human species as not uh, at all um, um, a dream or, a, or, or an exaggeration. And so I think it's necessary for uh, theologians, uh, those who engage in Christian studies, to have a moment, uh, a long moment of ideological clarity. What is it that is going on um, in this world of ours at a global level? Because this critical analysis is not in, involves not just uh, the local context, it involves also the regional context and the global context, and they're all united. So if we are to proceed to do um, Christian studies today, I think it's, it's, it's incumbent uh, upon us to, to know the, that context that is, that is um, underlying what we do in, in ways that we realize and in ways that we don't realize, mm -hmm. that we're not even conscious of. And that includes, I think, paying attention to the many crises uh, going on in, uh, in, in that have been going on in the world and seem to be getting worse as, mm -hmm. as the time advances. Not only in, in an individual sense, but also in a collective sense, how these crises, um, how each crisis um, affects the other and not only affects but multiplies the effect of the other uh, crisis and how together they begin to form a crisis of the world system mm -hmm. that we presently have or do not have mm -hmm. as we go from wor one world system uh, to another. What then becomes, in the light of tradition and the Bible, the proper response mm -hmm. in, the, in the critical analysis of praxis for Christian mm -hmm. studies? to do, and, and here I, I should think that this would apply to all religious studies. Mm -hmm. How then to respond, how then to lead one's life, mm -hmm. and I think that is uh, absolutely uh, imperative um, upon us. Mm -hmm. So how would a Christian studies oriented around articulation of visions of the good life, of the flourishing human mm -hmm. life, what would that look like, informed by yes. a, a, a realistic, honest engagement with our well, that is the question, present isn't human it? situation? Yeah. Yes. What is what is the good life? Who defines the good life? For whom is the good life uh, defined? In terms of the crises that are taking place, what is the good life in the midst of um, um, profound and by this time, perhaps uh, unending climatological change. Mm -hmm. What is the good life in terms of um, profound and growing inequality within nation states as well as among nation states? Mm -hmm. What is the good life uh, for uh, international migration at, at this point, which is also growing more profound and more extensive and more global mm -hmm. than ever before. What exactly do we mean, do we mean uh, by, the good, uh, by the good life? Um, I think it's a fundamental question that, that, uh, that really needs to be addressed and that I, I would say uh, what we have to look at is, is well, what does it mean today to hold to the principles, as I do dearly, of human dignity, mm -hmm. of uh, human freedom, mm -hmm. uh, social justice, human justice, peace? What does this all mean as the world around us uh, seems to be in profound turmoil, if not absolutely collapsing? In, in some respects, and, and I mean uh, really actually collapsing as it is the case in the Middle East, with uh, impact on, um, on everything else, mm -hmm. including Europe. Mm -hmm. 
I think it's it's a fund uh, it's it's not I think it's a fundamental concept in in humanistic studies mm -hmm. in global studies but it's also been a fundamental concept in um, in Christian studies as well mm -hmm. it is not the first time certainly that a thinker has a Christian thinker has pronounced himself or herself as deeply worried by the world and as choosing for a solution mm -hmm. to a crisis in the world system. Mm -hmm. I think, in a sense, all of the evangelists um, mm -hmm. were doing this, as, as, uh, as was um, Paul and others mm -hmm. uh, uh, in, in early Christianity that the Roman system that was constituted, that the, syst the world system that was constituted by the Roman Empire was perceived uh, maybe not as collapsing, certainly not as collapsing, but as having such consequences upon the human uh, condition that a, uh, uh, that a destruction of that system was not only contemplated but envisioned and desired so that a new world could be constructed uh, along other principles, uh, along other laws. So I think in, in that sense they pointed to what they saw as a fault in the world system and also as a remedy to the world system that would come from outside mm -hmm. the world system rather than from within. Mm -hmm. In a sense it came from within through the figure of and the message of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. but. As, an M, uh, as, as a conveyor mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. from another system that would take over and, and uh, annihilate and uh, begin a new system, the New Jerusalem mm -hmm. uh, of Revelation 21 or the Kingdom of God. All of this can be pursued in very humanistic fashion by saying that this vision is, uh, is, a, is, is a vision of, uh, of a, uh, a utopian ideal, a utopian society. Mm -hmm. And that, that these visions of utopia always form part of the human race. Mm -hmm. And so in a sense we can say what would be a utopian vision for our world today? Mm -hmm. uh, what would be a Christian utopian vision for our world today? What would be a Buddhist utopian vision mm -hmm. for our world mm -hmm. today? so that these different crises and crisis of the world system can be addressed, mm -hmm. at least addressed, acknowledged uh, and addressed in, um, in responsible fashion. I think that's a, that's a tremendous duty mm -hmm. uh, that is incumbent uh, upon us. What's the role, um, you, you started to speak about it, but I'd like to hear you say more about the, kind of the role of the vision of the positive in righting wrongs, right? It can, it can sometimes seem, um, and I'll freely admit, especially as a, as a white man, right, uh, I can, it can feel for me um, is it Pollyannish or naive to say, can we envision the good? Isn't that a necessary part of kind of resisting what needs to be resisted mm -hmm. in the world? Um, what do, what do you, how, how would you resolve that tension if you see a, see a tension at all? Of on the one hand, should we be putting our energy into casting vision for the good that we that we want to see, mm. versus uh, the energy that we should be putting into uh, to uh, resisting what is what is wrong and what needs to be mm. changed? I, I, I'm inclined not to see much of attention there, but mm -hmm. sometimes it feels in our discourse that there, there is that en how much wrong, how much energy should go into the negative mm -hmm. as opposed to the, par the yes. positive. No, I, 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 I agree. I think it's, I think it is one thing uh, to critique, for the sake of critique, and that's very necessary. Mm. But I thought I also think it's necessary uh, to critique, with a vision, of an alternative in mind, even if. Uh, utopian, mm. uh, because to critique for the sake of critique does the job, may do the job, but if you don't have a proposal to bring to the fore and say, this is where we can go, this is perhaps at least a point of departure for where we can go. 
uh, something is missing and, you, and one is not being uh, responsible. An example along these lines in, in, in some aspects of uh, early liberation theology uh, the critique of society and culture was very closely linked to a uh, critique of capitalism, which was industrial capitalism at the mm -hmm. time, about to change, but industrial mm -hmm. capitalism, about to change into financial mm -hmm. capitalism, with a sense, of, um, a sense of utopia along socialist communist lines, mm -hmm. certain ideal societies that would resolve the issue and had resolved the issue. And among those societies, uh, there, has, there, there was always, in, in some segments, I'm not saying in, ev in, any, in, a, in all, in, in, in everyone, that a country like my own, uh, Cuba, was uh, the future, a future for a more egalitarian society. Now, I was born in Cuba. I lived uh, in, a, in a socialist, then communist uh, regime, openly declared uh, as such. And from very early on, uh, from my mid-teens, I know that that was not the answer. That that system had to be critiqued as much as the capitalist system and was not being critiqued. And in effect, later on, we have seen now the critique of real socialism mm. that has been emanating even from leftist circles, the abuses of power, and the development, in a sense, of a, a form of state capitalism, mm. that these supposedly, uh, the supposed alternative was actually a different version of capitalism, mm. not, in, not one in which um, uh, the uh, uh, um, uh, class formations and, and uh, were abolished and class relations were surpassed, but that actually the state become, became the owner of all things and the workers did not. Mm -hmm. And so state capitalism resulted, and I think China is the most recent mm -hmm. um, example of this. So I, I think that critique has to be uh, um, comprehensive mm -hmm. and very much aware of um, of all systems, that doesn't mean you shouldn't put across a utopian vision, mm -hmm. but that even the utopian visions themselves must be critiqued, mm -hmm. because they ultimately they are also our constructions. But without a utopian vision, it is very hard to move. It is very hard to at least look for an alternative. But always, I think, in the sen with the sense that alternatives themselves. Mm -hmm are ideological products and mm -hmm. must be judged, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. evaluated uh, ideologically as well. Mm -hmm. Now I have, I, I mean, I, I, I subscribe to, I, I'm not, uh, with age I've become less and less naive, I suppose, and I, I'd realize that the world is full of conflict, that the conflict is at the micro level, even within the individual, certainly in family circles, we all know that, but also, and at the macro level as well. And that conflict is, has always been here, is here, and will always be here. And that if we use the term as it was used in certain circles, as liberation, as leaving behind conflict onto uh, a paradise lost and regained, we're really becoming very naive, very naive. So utopia has to take into account the omnipresence of conflict and how to handle conflict mm -hmm. at all levels. Mm -hmm. How does one do that? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because discerning the good requires some contending. This it, is it, it, it is there. Because the moment it's left unchallenged, it, it becomes dangerous. It, it, it becomes dangerous. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and even uh, to go back and realize certain things, uh, 
for that the, the very utopian notion and very welcome notion of the kingdom of God, mm. you know, if if you if you go in that route, the, the biblical tradition, well, you know, um, in in there is the tradition that um, the evil being comes from the kingdom mm. of God of rebellion mm -hmm. within the kingdom mm -hmm. of God, which means, in effect, that. In, a, in that sense of the beatific vision that, that should have settled all things, one particular entity mm. uh, was not altogether convinced and decides to go its own way. Mm. It seems to me that that, in a sense, deconstructs mm. the ultimate vision of all. That is, that even in the kingdom of God there is conflict, mm. and that that conflict led to the the opposite a, a utopian vision of evil <laughs> you mm. know, the ultimate evil the, mm. the, in, the the entity that was evil in every respect mm. and so that's a contradiction at the heart of the of the most utopian visions vision uh, of it all mm. which means that it does need to be reconceptualized and reformulated mm. now how to do this with human dignity with, uh, with freedom, mm -hmm. with justice, it is is um, is overwhelming, but it's also imperative, mm -hmm. and I think that's what in, uh, that's what uh, that's what we're called to do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you know, uh, why do it? Mm -hmm. Fernando. Thank you so much for being here. Looking so much, looking forward to our conversation this weekend. Thanks for spending the time. For me, uh, you know, it's it's utopian, also because uh, I'm not going to be around much longer, <laughs> and therefore mm -hmm. it's a question of um, you you realize the problem at a time when you can no longer really have the time to address it, mm -hmm. and so you must do you must give that unto others. And perhaps it won't take them as long to realize it, but there's also that sense that, you know, um, I fought the good fight, mm. and uh, now it remains for others to be done. But, but that sense of aging is, uh, begins to filter in in a very nice way. Mm. But I thank you. It's, it's, it's been very good, and I'm very, pre very pleased and very privileged and very honored.